Hi guys, it is 2.30 and it's Friday and it's time for our family Friday. And like we said last time, we're at Picture Canyon. Here's a beautiful map of the area. This is just east of Flagstaff. So if you live here in Flagstaff and you haven't been out here, you're gonna hear me say this multiple times. You need to come out. It is a beautiful spot. We are gonna to go to an area here in the park that actually has some uh, rock art. And you are gonna to get to meet one of my dear and special friends, Meg, and she's gonna talk a little bit about the rock art. And we're going to kind of do a quick little uh, walk through through this beautiful area today. Hey guys, um, it's Mary Soliday and I'm out here at Picture Canyon, which is a beautiful spot in uh, the eastern part of Flagstaff. And this beautiful person that is standing next to me, this is my good friend Meg. And um, she's going to talk uh, to us and just share a little bit of her thoughts and her culture, what she's been told about these uh, beautiful rock art pieces behind us. Hello everybody. Um, so I grew up here in Flagstaff. Um, I'm half Hopi and I'm half white. And um, I have had a unique experience living here in Flagstaff and going out to Hopi some. Um, and my dad was Michael Kabodi and he was a, a pretty well-known Hopi artist. And so he shared a lot, most, mostly what I know about um, Hopi culture and um, I guess, think like the, the ancestors of, of Hopi people like the Sanawa um, comes from his art. Um, he didn't spend a lot of time with me out on the reservation teaching me specifically about cultural things, but um, I'm lucky that I was able to, to learn some of it through his art. He's no longer with us. Um, and I'm also just happy that he left a legacy that I could learn from and also um, his relationship with the museum became a relationship that I, um, I'm also lucky to be part of. And so I've learned a lot through the museum also. So um, just that's something for people to know is that, you know, Native American people sometimes learn stuff about their culture, not through their ancestors, but just through books and, and also things, you know, from, from their grandparents and um, family members. But um, these pieces of rock art were done by um, a group of people that archaeologists have named the Sanawa people. From what I know about the Hopi people and where they all came from is um, different clans came from different areas and so I think that the Sanawa people were probably one of those people that ended up migrating out to Hopi and um, so there's a lot of shared imagery here and then on Hopi art and um, one of the things though that my dad used to say to me was that Hopi was a rain courting society so so much of the artwork and imagery has to do with water whether it's actual rain symbols or lightning symbols or cloud symbols or even water bird we were coming out here and it said that there's a cool water bird and so they were thinking maybe it's a crane or something um, and and i think that that's significant because you know here in the southwest water is life and we just have to it, it's so so important we can't have anything without water so if you saw a water bird it was probably something really special and that might be um, one of the reasons that they would put that down on the rocks to, to tell other people like, hey, this is an important place and this is somewhere where you can find water. Meg, just one more question. Uh, how do you feel when you, when you look at this rock art, mm -hmm. um, and we don't really know, I mean, we can assume like you did mm -hmm. with the water bird, because I think that's a great thought. Mm -hmm. um, does it have a special feeling for you when you see this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does to me. I think it's it's really special and I think we need to treat rock art like it's something so so special because it's something from the past and but it also 
ties to, I think you were going to talk about this a little bit later, but we as humans, we we communicate through symbols. Even exactly. now we have emojis and yes. we have all of those kind yes. of things. Um, but we just, we really want to be able to protect these because um, it, it's a piece of our heritage and it's, it's beautiful that it's out here for everybody to see and we're just so lucky about that and so um, we just have to protect it and it's just treat it like it's so so special that is really well said and i i look at this and i feel a connection with people that were here before me and they're not my ancestors i come from europe you know but i still look at this and it still is a special connection mm -hmm. even though they weren't my family members it's still history i'm still they're still human we're still yeah. all connected as human beings yep. and it's guys we're still here at picture canyon and we have actually found a spot that we can get closer uh to the rock art because um, this is really neat that we can be so close. This is so cool that we can get so close, so close to this artwork, this um, ancient stuff. But you notice that I'm not touching it. So when or if you get to go and view any rock art, this is not graffiti. Okay, this is something totally different. Okay, this is very, very old. And when we touch things that are very old and that are fragile, um, our oils from our skin can damage that. Other people, not because, probably just because they didn't know any better, but other people have gone to rock art sites and with paper and chalk and they've rubbed over the artwork, the rock art, and rubbed the chalk so the image comes on the paper so they can save it and and you know they probably did it because they loved it and they wanted to look at it all the time however that's not how we want to treat these things um, we want to protect these things we want to come here and look with our looking eyes and our hearts and kind of appreciate it but we can't touch this we can't take it with us um, if it's not for us to do our artwork on the rock, that's what graffiti is, is when we put our markings and that's graffiti. So it's not up to us to leave our mark here. This is something special for the people that were here before us. It was special to them and then, and this is their mark and we do not leave our mark on it. Um, this is really great. I have seen this spiral kind of um, picture before this symbol and nobody really can say, okay, this is exactly what this means. This is a person and they're doing this. They're standing together and they're having a ceremony. No, we don't know that. We weren't here. Um, all we do know is that something pretty special, like Meg was talking about the water bird, um, something happened here that was pretty special and special enough for them to communicate about it and we'll talk some more about symbols because we still use symbols today also i've been told that maybe they were migrating passing through here um, other art uh, on the rocks as you see some animals maybe like antelope so maybe this was a really great place there's water so maybe this was a great place to hunt, which would be pretty important when uh, that's your only food source. So to find a really special place that you could find food to eat, um, that would be worth communicating and talking about. To see some images uh, like what looks to me like a horny toad, and I've been told stories by some of my um, Native American friends that that horny toad is a symbol of grandfather. Um, and I actually, when we first saw that, I thought, oh, well, how cool would it be if we actually really had a real horny toad out here and that symbol of grandfather was with us. But uh, we have the rock art. Then remember how Meg mentioned that uh, this crane, this water bird, is actually the name of this area um, because we have found this picture, this uh, rock art picture, and how special it'd be to see that big crane bird um, and have the water here.
Um, you'll also notice on the rock is this beautiful green, um, it looks like just this green color growing magically on the rock. That's actually kind of a little bit of plant chemistry. You have Alice Algae and Freddy Fungus. They took a liking to each other and they've made their home here on these rocks. Again, just to me, symbolizing what a beautiful, special place that um, it, it is to be here. So if you notice that there is kind of like a dark facing that's just naturally done on these rocks. These rocks are igneous. And if you remember from our studying of rocks, igneous means volcano made in fire. So that's how these rocks were made. And they got here from volcanoes that are in this area. So they have this darker color uh, on them. And you'll notice that the rock art is lighter than the rock. And that's not because we got a marker and started drawing on that. Um, that is sketched or pecked, carved in. Um, and we're going to have some vocabulary words that talk about the difference, uh, different kind of rock art. The rock art that you're looking here has been carved or pecked, okay? And that's why it's a different color, because they've actually carved it into that rock. Now there's also kind of rock art that you can paint. And um, archaeologists have studied that, that they got paint from minerals, crushed it down, and they could turn those minerals by adding water and some animal blood to that to make a paint. And you can actually paint on the rock as well. And we have some of those uh, kind of rock art around Arizona, around the world, really. And uh, that's how they got on there. So they've either been pecked and carved into the rock or they have been actually painted. If you get to come to Picture Canyon or there's rock art all over Arizona, there's rock art all over the world. If you ever get to go to a site that has uh, this beautiful artwork and this way of communication, um, go there and look at it and know that something special happened, that this is a special place. Okay, one of our vocabulary words is uh, Picture Canyon. And that's where we're at today. And um, Picture Canyon, this is a place just east of Flagstaff. It is a natural and cultural preserve. And you already have seen the culture, the evidence that we have that different cultures and, and, and ancient people have lived here. Now you can kind of see around me, behind me, um, all of the nature that is here. So not only do we have um, beautiful rock art to look at as you're walking around Picture Canyon, you can also see all of the wildlife and the beautiful nature that is here. At another beautiful part of Picture Canyon, and I wanted to point out a couple things. You can see the igneous rocks, and um, the, the water below us is the Rio de Flag. And at one time, it was a pretty good water source. And right here, it's running pretty good. But um, over the years, we had to fly kind of trickles through parts of Flagstaff. And right outside of the Museum of Northern Arizona, we have a canyon that looks real similar to this and also has a little bit of the water from Rio de Flag trickling through it. So. Um, this is a really beautiful area and really close and similar to what we have right in front of the museum. Hey guys, so we're uh, back at the Museum of Northern Arizona and remember the beautiful spot that we were at with the uh, basalt rocks and the canyon and that beautiful waterfall and we talked about how similar uh, that canyon is to the canyon that we have here right in front of the Museum of Northern Arizona. So that's where we came back to. Uh, we don't have as much water. Come on over, let's take a look at it. We don't have as much water um, as they did at Picture Canyon, but it was created the same way once 
a long time ago. Uh, remember we said this was igneous, made of fire, kind of rocks from a volcano. So a lava flow actually came through here long, 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 long time ago. And then with the Rio de Flag, the water, it carved a canyon. And so that's how this canyon was formed and it is connected, a pictured canyon. Okay, so we came back to the Museum of Arizona so we could do some fun things with uh, rock art. We talked about our vocabulary word, uh, that beautiful place, Picture Canyon. So our next one, our next vocabulary word is petroglyphs. And a petroglyph is a kind of rock art, okay? There's two kinds. And it really, what makes the difference is how the rock art was created. So uh, petroglyphs is a rock carving or something pecked into the rock surface. This is a modern man-made uh, piece of rock art. But the reason why I got this out to show you this is because this is a really good example of the pectoglyph. And look, that has really been carved and pecked, that deer shape. And um, the artist did a really good job, and that's a real good example of the picking and the carving. Now, this is an original uh, pecked piece of art. This was used for educational purposes and it was from our collection, but uh, we did have permission to get this. So we didn't just go out to a rock art site and steal a rock. But uh, we have this that the museum did get permission to collect for educational purposes. And it really, look at that because thousands of years ago, someone, an ancient person, pecked those things into the rock. And now we get to look at it. I, I just think that, and I'm holding it. That is just so cool. So that brings us to our next vocabulary word. And this is the second way that rock art is done. And that's a pictograph. Okay. Do you hear the word pick, pick like picture? Okay. So when it's a pictograph, it is a picture symbol for a word uh, phrase that is painted on the surface. I'll show you this. So this again is modern art and we uh, are using it for educational purposes. And you can see that the symbols are painted on the rock surface. So that's a pictograph and that's another form of rock art. And both types, the, the carving and the painting, both types of rock art are found all over, okay? Now, our last vocab vocabulary word is anthropology. And anthropology is the study of human groups and cultures. So this is where we get the science part. And we have uh, people, scientists, that get to study uh, different cultures and gives us the information that we have um, here in the museum along with the stories and the other culture that we get from our native friends that are here now and still have been here. So now let's talk about the symbols that we find on rock art. So we got to see some really great images um, at Picture Canyon. Maybe you can see some that looked real uh, familiar from where we were just at. And I want us to think about how this isn't just an ancient form of communication. Uh, we still communicate today with symbols. So let's think about that. I'm going to hold up some symbols and I'm going to give you a minute to look at them. And even though I'm not going to be able to hear you, I want you to yell out what you think that symbol is communicating, is telling us, okay? Golden arches, 
McDonald's, right? Everybody, if you're driving on the freeway and you're looking for a McDonald's, everybody knows to look for the golden arches, right? That is uh, a symbol and it's communication. We all know what this means, right? A dollar, dollar signs, ching ching. This is my, my two sons' favorite symbol. They have to have their Nike, their Nike shoes. That's a, a symbol that we wear. This one might be a little tricky. If you're not familiar with this one, this symbol will be on things to communicate to people in every language, okay, that it's poisonous, okay? Something in there is toxic, all right? Now, you may be too young. You might not know this, but by the time you get into third grade, you're going to know what this symbol is. It's a mathematical symbol for division. That, that means you're going to divide, okay? This is a helpful symbol that everybody knows what it means. That maybe the parking spot, don't park there. It's just special for a handicapped person. So we have to um, save that and be respectful. This is an important one because sometimes you don't always hear the sound. So you have to have a picture too. There's a railroad crossing so you don't get ran over by that train. You're not driving yet, or some of you might not be driving yet, uh, but your parents will know this one. It lets the driver know that the road is slippery. Maybe there could be ice there. It's telling you of some danger. Oh, here is, for some of us, this is a symbolic religious symbol. It's a sign of peace in some uh, religion. And, oh, here's one that you'll see around Flagstaff. And you have to be careful because maybe there's deer or elk. And you got to be careful because you don't want to hit them. So our, oh, here's a good one. This one is, it stands for a couple different. So sometimes symbols can stand just like we said at the rock art sites that Different sim or the same symbol might mean different things to different people, okay? So this symbol actually can have a couple different meanings. Now for me, this meaning is um, my zodiac sign, I'm a Libra, okay? So that is my sign of uh, being a Libra, is the scales, because we weigh things out, okay? But if you're a lawyer or a judge, uh, this is a symbol of justice, and being fair, okay? So you're getting my point, right? And then of course, if you're coming up, maybe you were, this is a really good one out on Fort Valley or the highway right here by the museum. You're coming in uh, pretty fast, coming from the Grand Canyon, but you start to get into some houses. And we have a sign here that communicates, hey, you're going, you're going fast and you're gonna start hitting lights. So you gotta slow down, okay? So that's another safety uh, communication. Now, in the understanding about all humans, we communicate and symbols are a common language. But let's think about something else. I was not here when the ancient people were here and they were communicating and they were doing their rock art out at Picture Canyon. So I am not a part of their culture. I really don't know. I could, I can think about it. I can make guesses and I can uh, have fun with thinking about what they might be interpreting. Um, but I wasn't a part of that culture, so I don't know. So now let's flip it and let's say that what would happen for the people that are going to be here hundreds of years in the future, if they see, if they see a sign, if they see a symbol or a sign like this, they might not even have bikes. Everything might be a flying machine. And they might have a sign that says, hey, your flying machine is going to go downhill. And if they were to see this sign, they would have no idea what this meant. But to us, it's a way of communication. 
uh, communicating because we're in the same culture. We can speak the same language through symbols, okay? I just find that really, really cool because it doesn't matter um, the language that you speak, uh, we can come to an understanding and communicate even without speaking a language, but uh, we still share that culture. I thought it would be fun today if we could kind of experiment with uh, doing some painting. Uh, remember our little rock here? Um, I thought it would be fun if we could do some painting on a rock because um, I don't have the, the tools, the rock tools to do the carving or the pecking and that could be kind of dangerous anyways and like hurt your finger and I don't want to do that to anybody so painting seems a lot easier. However, if you don't want to get out the paints and that seems to be a little bit too much of a project today, you can. And you can do a lot of fun drawing and come up with your own rock art, okay? So either way you want to do it, it's still fun and it's creative, okay? Now, if you're going to paint your rock, um, you can do a couple different things. First, you need a rock. That's why they call it rock art, right? So be very careful. Get permission of where you get your rock. And um, I just happen to have a sandstone here. But remember, like the original rock art we saw at Picture Canyon, that happened to be on uh, an igneous rock. Um, and if you do it on a sandstone, um, to create a neater effect, you can spray paint it. I just have some spray paint here. You can get help and spray paint it so um, it gives it a little bit uh, better effect on the rock. But you don't have to, just like this sandstone, our rock here, we didn't. Okay, so you can be as creative as you want and uh, get your own piece of artwork going. Okay, so you get, but let's think a minute about um, the ancient people. They didn't have acrylic paint and they didn't have a paintbrush. So where did they get their paint? They had to get everything from nature, right? So I have an example here of um, some sandstone and you can really see, look, when I touch it, look how that is iron. So that's a mineral that comes off of the rock just naturally. And you can even see what it looks like when it's ground up in there. And we have a really cool picture of some artifacts that were found. And we, again, we have permission to have these things and they're in our collection. And I got to take a picture of them so I can use them for educational purposes. These were all things that were found at a, um, a site that was used to uh, get ready to paint the rock and to do rock art. You would uh, have used a rock that was um, very convenient that it has this little dip. And the more you grind, the better your grinding rock gets. So you have a rock here, you get your minerals. In this case, it looks like that sandstone, that iron was used, okay? And then for a brush, um, we can just use a paintbrush, but um, they didn't have paintbrushes. So again, going to nature and what is available here for us to use, there's a lot of yucca, a plant, right? And if you get, don't do this at home. I'm going to just show you this because I don't, I, it's kind of tastes nasty. But um, you get a dried yucca leaf, okay? And if you chew it a little bit, look, doesn't that look like a paintbrush? Isn't that cool? So they would use to paint is the yucca and you could paint with it. Now, um, I have some um, mineral in here mixed with water and then um, I mentioned this earlier that to really make it stick, I mean this rock art is very, very old 
and it's weathered. How does it still stick around for such a long time? Um, I've been told stories from some of my native friends that you can put animals blood as kind of like a binder in your uh, mineral and water paint and that blood kind of makes a binder and it helps the paint stick and really preserve it on the rock so your rock art sticks around and doesn't just wash away the next day in the rainstorm. For our purposes today we are going just to use acrylic paint. Uh, watercolors Probably it, it'll work, but they won't show up um, a lot and they won't last very long. So acrylic paint uh, really helps. Now, um, that's what we're going to use. And I have a paintbrush. Throw that around. Oh, I got some cool colors going on there. And now, you guys have done artwork with me before. You know that I am not an artist. Um, your uh, art rock will probably be much better than mine. Uh, but we're having fun, and that's the most important part. So I'm going to look at some of my symbols. And this is a really cool symbol. I would never be able to do this one. Um, this is actually the symbol for the Museum of Northern Arizona. Isn't that cool? But I am not going to be able to do that one. I might be able, I'm going to try to do the sun. That looks like a sun uh, symbol to me. So it looks like you put a dot. <laughs> oh, I got a really big dot. Okay. And then I'm going to make a, wow. I think I got too thick of a paintbrush, but I'm going to, and then I'm going to make even a bigger. Okay. And then I'm going to have some rays come out of my sun. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know if anybody would want to look at my rock art, but I had fun doing this. And you guys can create your own rock art, whether you paint it, whether you draw it, or if you have some help, try uh, pecking on a rock and uh, scraping it. it. It's pretty hard. So I had really fun time with you today and so happy that we could share this time and go to Picture Canyon and next time we're together, we are going to be in the Colton Community Garden and we're going to talk all about corn. And corn is very, very important. So I'll see you next time.